cogent advice, and inspiration from real self-made millionaires, welcome to The Eventual Millionaire with your host, Jamie Masters. Welcome to Eventual Millionaire. I'm Jamie Masters, and I am so excited to have the Ryan Lee back Woo! on the show again. Check out his shirt. So you can find him at freedom.com. Make sure you spell it right, F-R-E-E-D-Y-M.com. Thank you so much for coming back on the show again. It's been forever. It's been a, it's been a few years. I was on definitely one of the earlier shows, and it's been so awesome, Jamie, to see just you transform from the first podcast to the book, which I was honored to actually be in that, was the compilation of some of the first interviews to the podcast now to this, all the, all the people you're helping. So uh, when we reconnected and you know I'm here, I'm just excited. I, and I'm excited to share all the new stuff we're doing and I just wanna teach. And Ryan was one of my coaches at the very beginning where I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And he's like, send an email. And I'm like, I'm scared. I don't wanna send an email. You're terrified. <laughs> you, I'm like, it's okay to sell. Like if you sell. do it right, I know. And yep. look at you. You're a selling machine. Oh, better, better, for sure. You're, no, so, you're great. <laughs> so, and that's, and that's sort of the piece that I think is really important. This is why I love that we brought it up is because everybody goes through that crap when they're going through this, right? Oh, yeah. So no matter where anybody is right now that they're listening, what I would love to do today, because I think this is what you're genius at, is going through sort of the process of just pushing outside of your comfort zone a little bit more. So mm -hmm. that way that growth does actually happen. Make sense? Yeah, I'm absolutely. Put you on the spot. Okay. No, no. Yeah. Yes. No. I mean, you have to. It's there's there's a. It's like get comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and you have to try new things and push. And that's that's part of being an entrepreneur. Look, I am. I don't like risk. Um, I'm okay with taking calculated risk. Uh, but if it's sometimes it's too easy, and we get really comfortable, and we you know, hey, I'm just going to do my one little Facebook post a day, and that's it. Everything's good, and I'm not going to try anything different. I'm not going to say anything a little bit. That might challenge some people against their thoughts, but you know, one little thing: if if you want to make quick inroads in any industry, or at least get noticed, find what everyone is saying. Like, what's the norm in the industry? What is everyone talking about? And find a way to kind of go against that. And now, obviously, only if you believe it, right? Like, I I, I happen to get a lot of fitness people in my world because that's where I started. But if if everyone's talking about how much they love CrossFit and CrossFit, or let's say kettlebells, everyone's talking about kettlebells, kettlebells. I love kettlebells, and you're kind of the person that says, hey. Here's why you shouldn't use kettlebells because it's dangerous and blah, blah, blah. It's too much weight, bad for whatever it is. All of a sudden, you, you instantly kind of get a little bit of a boost like, oh, what's this person? Why, why should I not? What's the case against kettlebells? So that's a, that's a little – see, I'm just going to drop nuggets, bombs all day, Jamie. That's what I'm here for. So, and oh, I, yeah. I think this is hugely important because uh, I am a type of person that wants everybody to like me, which is very interesting. So I have actually, I am very opinionated though. So I've actually <laughs> stayed away from sort of poking. And then the other yeah. day I saw somebody uh, did an article about how Napoleon Hill sucks or something like that. And I was like, ooh, and then I, I shared it with a whole bunch of friends. And we're writing yep. a new post about um, other pieces about Napoleon Hill coming up on the back end of that because I did more research into it because I wanted to know. But it was so shared. Like I shared it with all of my friends. Did you see this? Did you see this? Yeah. Right. And you saw it yeah. too. So what do you think made that post? And we'll have to link. Well, maybe we won't link to it because they did it on purpose. But but <laughs> but yeah. you tell me what made that really, really successful. Because it's in the in our world, right? And, and this person's audience, um, Napoleon Hill is like you know, the godfather of personal development, everything came from him. And he sat down with Carnegie and, you know, it, it's this story that's been passed by. And it's, it's so ingrained in every, every teaching, every course I've read, Think and Grow, which everyone has. And it's like the thing. And you never question that. And the fact that he's saying it's all a scam, it's a lie, this guy was shady, it's all made up. He probably never even met with Carnegie, just completely goes against everything we've ever been taught by everybody. So of course it's going to get eyeballs and it's, it's going to get noticed. Um, you know, whether it's true or not, and the research, I, I don't know, I'm not judging, I have no clue, but I do know that it got a lot of opens and, and I guarantee you this built this person's list and the person probably got clients or sold products from that just by being kind of opposite what everyone says. Like whatever's popular, whatever's trending, so in this space of marketing, like everyone talks about like Gary Vee, he's like the big thing, right? And there are people who love it and hustle and work 24 seven, the minute you go against that and say, it's not really about working all day and hustling all day. It's it's the opposite. You, people are like, oh, really? Like it's just it's just a different way to think about marketing. But but the the key to it is whatever you're writing, you got to believe it. Um, I I don't I never advocate saying something just for shock value. 
just to get attention because that's not good. <clears throat> if you truly believe it, then great, then talk about it, but you can't be scared. I always look at it like this, like what's the worst that can happen? Um, I, I was very fortunate, first six years, you know my story, Jamie, first six years I worked in a children's rehab hospital, so I've seen everything. With kids with, with spina bifida, spinal cord injuries, I've seen so many kids pass away, more than anyone should ever see in a lifetime, but it put things in perspective, and it's like, you know what? Everyone's complaining, like we get home at night and people are like, oh, I miss Seinfeld. I'm like, you miss Seinfeld, you can walk. Like you're not in a wheelchair, like you're fine. Um, so what's the worst that can happen? I do an article and it only gets eight views or three likes or two shares or only four people build my list. Who cares? At the end of the day, when I'm on my deathbed, am I really going to worry about that? No. So do what's right. Um, do what you believe. And don't be afraid like, to say what you really think. I love that you said Seinfeld because who the heck? No. <laughs> that has been a long Seinfeld. time since and Seinfeld I, I, was on. The well, I was actually trying to do a more current. I was going to do an 80s reference. Like I was going to say Family Ties or – Thank well, I don't want to say Cosby Show anymore. When you say Cosby, <laughs> that's a whole different connotation. Yeah, but maybe <laughs> like, we I, want I those what, eyeballs. Yeah. Maybe we should yeah. be hashtagging that, and then people will pay attention. So that's yeah. that's the other piece, though. How do we we still want to make sure it's our audience when we do stuff like that, right? So so thinking grow rich. Everybody that f sort of went after that was like people that cared about Think Grow Rich, hence the reason. So there's sort of an avatar in this. Instead of just sort of going down the path of, I think this is true, it doesn't really have to do with this specific audience of mine, but I think this is true. So where's that line of, it's for my people and it's controversial? You know, it's funny because a lot of times, so we'll be in a specific market. So, so let's say, let's go back to you know fitness again. Um, so you think, so people think, well, I'm teaching fitness online and I'm a fitness professor person and they think the only thing you have to talk about ever yep. is fitness or recipes or workouts or burpees and you know what there's a lot of people who even though they're passionate about that <clears throat> want to talk about other things and it's okay to talk about other mm -hmm. things so for example we have our freedom our private group this morning i just posted and you know i look i love all things like retro and 80s and i just posted i said very important this is a paid group very important please list your favorite 80s movie show and band and i went first and I, what did I say? Favorite sh movie was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Day Off, of course. Of course. Favorite musician, Michael Jackson. You, you can't even argue that. Yeah. Um, and show, I think I said Family Ties. Um, you said Cosby I Show. I know you know. <laughs> I did not. I did like it, but I, I can't say it. Um, so, but just, and you, it's amazing how, many, how much engagement we get from that because it just makes people feel good. I mean, <clears throat> you want to help people, but don't be afraid to go in different roads and talk about different things. Okay. Um, so many just, questions on this because we yeah. talked about this a little bit with uh, yeah. the interview that I just did with Gerard Adams because I was asking him where that line is because to me, right. for my paid people, I tell them to delete Facebook off their phone. I'm like, do not right. bug your life with stuff that's silly, right? right? Right. That being said, we are humans and I literally, I mean, I have a dead woman Deadpool next to me. You know what I mean? So I'm a huge geek and yet I won't ever post in my paid group, at least the mastermind that I've got anything about how much I love geeky stuff, right? So where is that well, look, line? There's my, vine, there's my record player oh my with, gosh, with, my re so with awesome. all my records. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's a great question. I, I think it also, let me, I gotta, now I gotta fix my camera, look at this. We're, we're getting you get all too excited. Here. I get too excited. Um, I, I think first of all, it depends, if you take kind of a step back, what's your brand? Like, what is it, what is it about Jamie or Ryan or George? like what is it, about that person. If, if you took your audience and we're in a, in a different room and you were in the other room, Jamie, and I had 10 of your biggest fans, I said, describe Jamie. Ooh, what would you question. say? How would you talk about her? What would, like, and it's, it, some people, like you get excited, sometimes you get nervous, like, oh my God, what would they say? What would they say? Um, for, so for me, for my brand, it's like, we like Ryan, he teaches, it's no BS, it's about being simple, and it's fun, and it's, you know, at my events, we laugh half the time. Um, and it's not always taking yourself so seriously. So, so the idea that we can talk about, you know, what's your favorite eighties movies? As as long as obviously it's done within reason. So if I had, so let's say every ten posts in a paid group, and it, eight or maybe even nine are about like that topic, that thing it's related to that, and one is going to be fun. If it's the opposite, if people are paying and every post is me wearing a stupid hat or like, you know. Uh, wearing an ALF t-shirt, they're get, it's going to get old. and be like, all right, well, what is this stuff? So I, I think it depends on your brand. And and I think there's always a time to add in the personal. I mean, my emails, I start off every email with something personal, a story. Um, and and you, you just got to be careful with trying to be trying to be funny. Like there's always that person, I'm sure you know that person, Jamie, that you're at a party or an event or something and they come over and they try to be funny and they're just annoying. Yeah, you're like, like okay. <laughs> 
I like try and help like, them, you know, come on, you can do it, buddy. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't try so hard. And I'll tell you the, the best kind of humor that works is self-deprecating. Um, I don't like making fun of other people. Like I think sometimes that's mean spirited. It's, it's fun. Like sometimes if you're joking around with other people, but like if you're always putting other people down, that kind of sours and people don't want, they don't want to be around you. Mm-hmm. You, you want to look at your marketing. Like if I was at an event, um, who are the people there? What are we going to talk about? What are we going to interact? So if, even if you're at one of my marketing events, when everyone's in the corners and mixing, they're not only talking about business, right? They're talking about other things, especially me. My brand is a lot. I work from coffee shops. I do this from home and I have four kids and I'm all about family. You know, you're about your kids too. So it makes sense to talk about family and, oh, and I'll say things like on a Friday, hey, it's the weekend's coming and any fun plans this weekend, you know, just let's kind of break it up. Connecting human to human in general. So where does that come across? So to me, I can do that in person really, really well, right? I'm really good in person. Writing things is not my forte. So we were talking about emails beforehand. So I'm, I feel like I'm pretty funny in, you know, networking settings. No, you're not. When it's, <laughs> I love you too, Ryan. And then when we come to email or, or any sort of written things, I'm like, um, yeah, I just go nothing. So give me tips because yeah. I bet a lot of people are like, I can't actually do this. So give right, me what right. you do because your emails are really engaging. I mean, I've had people like, have you seen Ryan's emails? I'm like, I have. <laughs> they're very impressive. and But personal and I feel like they're coming from you. So give me all your your tactics and secret sauce for that. Okay. The, the number one overall thing is, you're right, people make that mistake, right? The, what happens is you sit down and the minute you go on your keyboard, you start thinking like a copywriter, right? You start thinking about, okay, this has to sound different. And then you start with the big headlines. Who else wants to blah, blah, blah. They laugh when I sat down to play the piano. And all of a sudden it sounds like it's someone you're not. Um, there's this, this great copywriter, Abby Woodcock, and she, she phrased it really well. She said, imagine you're standing at a bar, or sitting at a bar, talking to a friend. That is how you should write your email. And that's exactly how I write my email. I make believe I'm um, just talking to a friend. That's it. Um, and I know my, my dad's on my email list. My sister's on my email list. All my high school friends are on my email list. Um, my college roommate, you know, people, all people in the neighborhood here, my friends who are like hedge fund and multi-million dollar investment bank, they're all on my list. So when I'm talking to them, I'm like, let me just talk. Let me communicate. Let me just let them in. And I truly don't think like I'm trying to sell them or, or write copy. I, I, and I've said this phrase for a while now, it's don't write like a copywriter, start communicating like a friend and just write exactly how you're speaking. And I write my emails every single morning. I sit down, I have a routine and that's important too. I think you have to have a routine. You, it's, it's hard to just say, okay, I only got five minutes and, and you got to type something out really quickly. Like every morning at seven o'clock in the morning when the coffee shop opens, I get there, I get the same latte, I sit in the same seat and I'm like, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to communicate with my friends? And I just start writing. And people, when they get it, they feel like I'm talking to them. And little tactical things, like not using things like, hi, everybody, right? Because if I was writing to you personally, Jamie, which we've emailed before personally, I wouldn't say, hi, everybody, because you feel like I'm talking to everybody. So I would just say, hi. Now, you don't, I also don't like using those, you know, where you insert people's Me names. Either. Like, hi, Jamie. Yeah. How, it just fe- especially like if they so put fake. a fake name like I'm on Derek Halpern's list but I wrote I wrote a different name and I know every single time he emails me not right. personally it's right not you know real. if you type in like a hole hi a hole <laughs> how are you today it, it just I think it does the opposite so I'd rather say hey it's Ryan and I'm here at the coffee shop or hey you know th- so I I I don't I don't use those insert things even though oh you know old school says if you do it it can increase thirty percent you know but it's all fake um and everyone knows it's fake. So getting into that frame of I'm talking to a friend, it's in a routine, every morning I'm going to do this, or whether yours is once a week, getting in the right physical space. So I have in my basement over there, there's a table, that's where I pay my bills. I, I cannot write an email from that table because I'm just like, I get in bill mode, IRS mode, I hate that stuff. So I need, a diff- and for a while it took me, it took me a while to figure out what that space is. For me, it's a coffee shop, for you it might be your bedroom, it might be your kitchen table, it might be the library, it doesn't matter. But you right? write them um, actually currently, so it's not like you batch them, you write them on the day. Oh, gosh. On the day. Oh, oh, absolutely. Oh, I'm all batched. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why I like that. Okay. Um, so everyone talks about funnels, and I'm, I'm kind of going off a little bit, but I'll, I'll bring you back. Everyone talks about funnels, funnels, funnels. You got to have 18 sequence autoresponders, and you got to move them through the funnel. Again, would I do that to a friend? No. Do, if I'm the customer, do I want to be put in a funnel? No. And the worst thing, don't ever use that word tripwire. 
I know the market is. I know. I don't like it either. I'm like, oh, we're going to kill everyone. This is awesome. Yeah, great. Great great way to start a relationship. I can't. My my friend Kevin Rogers came up with a word a while ago. I wrote a post about this like two years ago. Instead, we call it welcome mats. And I know Noah Kagan ended up, I think he created a product called the welcome mat. I don't know if that was inspired by us, but we call them welcome mats because it's just a different feel. So you get in that, you get in that feel. So let's say you subscribe to my email. You might get one welcome. Hey, welcome. I'm Ryan. You know, this is kind of, it's, you're going to get an email every day. This is what we're going to talk about. If you don't want to be on it, that's cool. Just click the link below. You don't have to stay on. And, and that's it. And then they're in my live sequence. Like that's it. Because hmm. what happens is you can reference, it feels, re- there's something about the energy of a live real time email that just can't be rep. I don't care how good or how many email courses you've taken. You can never replicate that feeling of, Hey, did you watch the Grammys last night? Or I can't believe what Beyonce wore or, you know, oh, the uh, Star Wars is opening next week. There's something about it. Just fe- just like, again, a real conversation with a friend. You're not going to say, hi, Jamie. How are you? What a great day. Did you read this new book by Napoleon? No. Like, hey, it's Ryan. I'm at, I'm at the coffee shop. And, and you're, you know, I think the branding is still important of that feeling. Like, what do you want people to say about you, to think about you, to feel about you? With me, my stuff is like, now, and, and I've evolved, right? Now it's about the freedom with the why, um, working from a coffee shop, being home by three o'clock, always being with my kids. So it makes sense that I would tell a story about, oh my God, you know, today I'm driving my kids till 10 o'clock tonight because of gymnastics meet. Like it makes sense. Um, so tying that all together and just telling stories, engaging, not taking yourself so seriously, showing your imperfections. The most annoying thing in the world is getting email from people who think they're perfect. Oh, hey, I'm another perfect, launch. Ryan, shush, don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you are, but besides you, besides the, the perfect Jamie, and I have a friend Chris sitting here who's perfect as well. Um, the, you know, it's talk about your flaws. Some of the best emails you'll ever write, some of the best promotions happen by like happen when you screw up um, or when when you're just being real. And that's mm-hmm. the thing. Just be real. Like you could celebrate the wins, but share the losses. Like don't. When, when every email is like, oh my God, I just had the best. Like if you're a fitness professional, you know what? You weren't born with a six pack and I don't want to hear that. You know, tell me what makes it more real is like yesterday, man, I, I, I had a whole bag of M&Ms and not the little one, like a large. Um, and it's okay. It does okay make us feel that. much better about ourselves well, if the fitness guy did that. Oh, for sure. We're so human. where do we, where do we put, put that line though? Because to me, social was always about sort of um, taking away the curtain a little bit more and email was more professional. And I, mm-hmm. cause I have the worst grammar in the world. We haven't checked like 17 times whenever I write anything, because if it My was to a friend, zero. nobody yeah. could read it. Like really, it's that bad. And, and right. so, but that's okay. That, that, there's see, I, I don't look at e- I look at email as the exact same thing as social and social is the exact same thing as me in person. And whenever people meet me in person, yeah. That's the first thing they say is, oh my God, you're just like your email yeah. or you're just like the video or you're just like this podcast. Like you're exactly the same. And that's how it should be. You ever meet someone, you see their emails and you meet them. You're like, this isn't the person. Yeah, like, no. this, they're, they're outgoing. And they're like, hey. like just yeah. be you, whatever you, whatever you is, just be you. So I don't look at my, e- and that's the thing. I don't get in the frame of mind. Like this is email. It has to be professional. It's like, no, like this is me, the good, the bad, the ugly, either you like me or you don't. If you don't, that's cool. Like I want you to, but all right, you know, it's, uh, I, I try to be nice and try to give and try to share. Like the, and it's funny, there's a, there's a local college, and I know the, the woman who's head of the whole business and marketing department is on my list. But it's okay. I'm still writing my thing. You either vibe with me or you don't. Um, Which I love, the but where's the – so, like, you do daily emails. Yeah. What's your yes. open rate? And, like, how do you keep coming up with that? Why, why do so much? I mean, there are people who say every – like, they – Tell me, we get emails every day, Ryan. I open I, you're the first. Your email is the first thing I open. First of all, it's consistent, right? They know yeah. it's coming every single morning. I write it at my time between seven and eight in the morning, so they're going to get it in the morning, depending where they live. Their time zone, obviously, but they know it's getting there every day. So here's little things you could do. Um, let's think about first thing you could do is sit down and be like, okay, what happened yesterday? What are some? So let's let's role play for a second, Jamie. Okay, okay. I'll make believe I'm going to write your email. Yay. Um, well, well, sometimes what I like to do often is start with what's my end goal? Like what's the call to action? What do I want to sell or maybe promote? Because at the end of the email, 
it's it's still a business, right? We want to make money, so there's there's going to be a call to action, a soft offer. Yeah, well, that, and that's my question. How do we bridge the gap between hey, okay. I'm having fun, and oh, wow, I let's, have this thing you should let's totally do it buy right it. now. Let's, okay, let's do this in real time. Okay, okay, so tell me a product or program you have coming, or that you'd want to maybe mention today, whether it's live or it's on the way, whatever I don't it is. Have anything or, that I'm selling right now? That's not just good. something. I just sold uh, out my mastermind. Um, we we need to do an audio book version of the book. Okay, so the audio book yeah. version. So maybe. You want to send people to buy, let's say you have the audio book ready and you want to tell them, you know, you want to get them to buy the audio book. So it's on Kindle or wherever it is. Um, what's the audio book about? It's a, my eventual millionaire book that I just never did the audio book on. Okay. The eventual millionaire. <laughs> okay. So now we know, okay, we eventually want to somehow tie it into the audio book. Okay. Tell, take me through yesterday. Tell me some things you did yesterday. Was it uh, eventful or anything? Just give me. Yesterday was coaching day. It was Tuesday. Okay. So it's uh, back to back coaching days. Was there any, so how many clients did you co- talk to yesterday? Well, I had two prospects and four clients probably okay. and a team. So I, out of the four clients, was there mm-hmm. anything that was like interesting that was a common mistake? You don't have to obviously say the person, but. Uh, they, or, or, or. We were talking and, about like Miracle Morning and we were talking about uh, how we can mess that up big time sometimes or evening, like going to bed early enough. That's okay. something that so we So Miracle about. Morning by, by Hal Elrod, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you, in your book, in your audio book, do you mention Hal at all? Is there a story with Hal? I mention morning stuff for sure. Morning routines. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Before well, I is- interviewed Hal, but yes. Yeah. Okay. So okay. now we've got a potential time. Ooh. doesn't always have to be a perfect fit. So you say, okay. Ebook, uh, yesterday you start thinking about who you went through. Okay, morning, miracle morning. Okay, now it's starting to tie together. So, so hey, it's Jamie, and you know, I'm, I'm that. So you, you know, you talk a lot about your, your kids. So you know, and what do you have going on today with kids, with family, with anything? Do you have anything going on today? Like today's seven focus? back-to-back interviews. Okay, <laughs> so hey, no, no. <laughs> so here, here it could be. Okay, so you sit down. You're, you're, you're writing. Hey, it's Jamie, and you know, I'm going to make this quick because I have seven interviews for the podcast coming. Um, you know, I just want to share a story. Yesterday I did a coaching call with, you know, Jenny, um, and she has this great thing. And we were talking about her morning routine, specifically the, uh, mir- was it Miracle Morning? Morning? Mm-hmm. I always screwed that thing up. Yeah. What, what, what other things, right? Um, and I was telling about the importance of that routine, of having that morning thing. And in the, if you've read The Miracle Morning, which is a great book, by the way, by Hal Elrod, um, he recommends you spend at least 10 minutes or 20 minutes reading and per- some kind of personal development. Um, and I know there's a lot of you, you know, oh, and if you and then you get to the thing, oh, by the way, you know, we have our new audio and we have our new audio book that just came out or is coming out in a week and we take our best stuff and you can actually listen to it. So if you feel like you don't have enough time, this is a great way to make this part of your morning routine. And we actually mentioned morning stuff in there. Click here to get the audio. So that obviously I did this off the cuff. I'd sit and write it and, and flesh it out a little bit more, but you get the gist. It's a little bit personal at the beginning. I had, you know, think about what you did. First thing, the fact that you did four coaching calls yesterday, because you could say I did four coaching calls. Oh, Jamie does coaching. <laughs> I didn't know that. Mm. Her, coaching, her coaching schedule full. Next time she opens it, I might want to jump on that. Second thing is you have seven interviews today, so you're kind of foreshadowing all this great stuff, and you could say I have seven interviews, and one of them is, is with this, this guy, Gerard. And, but the other one's with Ryan Lee, and you've got to wait the to see that. Ryan, uh, yes, totally. Yeah. And so, huh. so now you're talking about your show, and hey, I'm, I'm – you know, I, I'm a working woman. I'm hustling. I'm moving. You know, there's no so you ha, you have all these kind of very subtle things in there, but it's friendly, it's informal, and then you talk, you give that little learning lesson about the importance of a morning routine, and you look into. Oh, by the way, if you're interested, we have the new audio book of Venture Millionaire that just came out. Um, click here if you want it. If not, that's cool too. See you tomorrow. How do you Hugs. prep for that stuff too? So, so because I batch everything in my entire life, I right? Yeah, I so, do. <laughs> I am one of I am the most efficient person I know, which is horrible to say, but it is totally true. Uh, probably to a bad degree, to tell you the truth. That being said, when when we're trying to figure out, um, ed- we have editorial calendars until months in advance. Mm-hmm. We have all all that sort of stuff all set up, so that way I don't feel rushed because I don't like feeling rushed in general. Right. That being said, it being and doing something on topic on time seems yeah. difficult for me. So is there, is there anything that you do, whether you preempt and figure out what is my call to action for the next three weeks? So that way, at least you know what to start with, or do you go, hmm, what am I going to do as a call to action today? Um, pretty much the latter. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, you know, we'll have big things. Like, so we'll know, okay, we have, so f- Freedom, our, our next big initiative is we're going to launch a print magazine. 
So we know that's like a month away. Okay. Um, so that is in the back of my mind. So maybe I'll tease it a few times, right? Uh, so I'll mention an email. Oh, by the way, today we're, we're, I have seven interviews lined up. It's all going to be for the magazine coming in three weeks. So I'll, I'll do a little foreshadowing. But um, that's about it. You know, if there's a big thing or like maybe we're completely redoing freedom. Um, so for example, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Okay. Last week, um, it was on Friday. So depending when people are seeing this, we're, I live in the Northeast in Connecticut. I know you escaped and went to Texas. Thank goodness. I heard about all this now. Oh, you are <laughs> such a sellout. You are so, although Maine isn't, Maine isn't really Northeast. I don't know what the hell that is up there. It's Northeast is, it's fine. is New sure. York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Although I'm a New Yorker, I, I can't believe I'm in Connecticut right. 20 years. Uh, <laughs> Connecticut is very soft. But anyway, uh, so the, God, I forgot what the heck I was even saying. I'm no, talking awesome. Friday, <laughs> there was snow. Okay. Yes. It's a big snow day. So yes. it was Wednesday and I, you know, we saw the big forecast for snow and Wednesday night they said, oh, school's going to be canceled for tomorrow. So I'm going to have all my four kids. So I'm going to be home. I have a lot of people in the Northeast. Perfect. It's going to be a snow day. What can I do? Well, I know my people keep asking about membership sites. That's always a big topic. And I figure, okay. What can I do? What's a hook? So I found that I came up with this idea. Let me eliminate all excuses. I'm going to do, I'm going to teach them how to do a one page membership site. And I did this live and in real time. So I did a live training on the snow day. That was it. With so your I said, kids like running around? What? I, I, so I went in the basement. You're I like, said, kids go away. No. <laughs> actually there's in the basement, there's like a room within a room. It's like a storage closet. No, and I'm not kidding. It used to be my office. My wife made it a storage closet. So I went in there. So I shut one door, shut the other door. It's pretty soundproof. And I said, just please don't bother me. Give me, give me like 45 minutes. And I went in and I did a promo for a lot. And it was completely spur of the moment. I said, today, you know, tomorrow's a snow day. We're going to do this live training at one o'clock. If you're a member of Freedom, click here to, to register. If you're not, jump up, come on in. The water's mighty fine. And that little promo brought in a lot of members. It was spur because it was, it was real. It was honest. It was like, I'm listening to my members. What do they want? I'm living in the real time. It's not so like, because that, again, that's more my brand. I move fast. I move quick. I'm, I think fast on my feet. And I'm not the guy who's going to think of a launch for eight months or a year and plan this out. And that, that fits with me. Yeah. For you, if you're known as more of like, I'm systems, I'm measured, it might not work quite so much or unless you do it as kind of a like, hey, it's a snow day tomorrow. I must be out of my mind, but I've decided to do this last minute training I, it could be great. It could be a disaster. I don't know, but come on in and let's try this together. You see, so you kind of use it to your advantage. Uh, so you, it, you can make it fit in. But for me, it was like a perfect fit. Um, and it was a really nice little mini one or two day promo. And I just, and the recording just went up today. So I, I lengthened it a little bit and we just promoted it again. Say, hey, the recordings are now up and we're getting more members signing up just for that. Um, I love so you, how you do it on. So I love it feels very inspired, like inspired. Like, I feel like I'm going to do this right now. Do you I, have I, a big I, list of call? Like, is there any way we could talk about like what types of call to actions you do? Because that was a recorded within the membership site. So they technically can't see it otherwise unless they join. Right. Or how did that work? Right, what are some calls right. to action that you typically do? Because I feel like I don't so, have that many things that I could be. Hey, do this. Hey, guys, do most, this. Yeah. Mo most people don't. Um, you know, it, look, there's, there's an advantage to doing like a one product business, right? Like, Hey, like, like Marie Boyle, like I sell one big product a year, like, you know, a, a two or $3,000 training and that's it. And the rest of the time, you know, call to action, what are they going to be? Cause you're not really selling the core or it's just one thing. And after a while it, you kind of drown it out. So it, it becomes a little bit more challenging. You could use affiliate links. If that's your thing, you could just be your call to action could just be getting people to social you know, or sharing, or if you like it, comment. I mean, that could be your call to action. Um, for me, that's why I love having a membership site. So freedom is, we call it like the Netflix for lifestyle entrepreneurs. We up to, we create a new training every friggin' day, you You're know, crazy. cause I wanted to, <laughs> With every day, wow. I, because I wanted my energy, my stuff. And I, and we just recorded your training last week. Like mm -hmm. I want to just, I want to do the, no one, none of my competitors would ever do like I'll outwork them. So I want to do, so what's cool about having a membership site in general is there's always something new for me to talk about a new hook, a new promotion, something different. You spoke at my freedom fest a year and a half ago. I could do something about podcasting and Oh, by the way, if you want to see that session with Jamie, click here. So that's what gives me so much, so many different things to talk about. Um, even if you have a membership site, you update every two weeks, you could still kind of tease it. Um, and just, there are going to be people who are going to join your programs or buy your products for different reasons. Sometimes it might be, to save money. Sometimes it might be to save time or, 
you know, a, a big payday or a small payday or recurring revenue or to gain 10 pounds or to lose 10 pounds. Or to, so if you, you got to hit on like different emotional buttons. Um, and that's, so I look at it kind of like a little jigsaw puzzle. Like, what am I going to talk about today? What gets me excited? But I, this energy you feel is really how, when I sit down to email, how I feel. I'm like, you, you, it all starts, and, and you know this, Jamie, and I'm sure people know this, like, it all starts with, you really have to love what it is you're selling. And I think everyone jumps ahead to the tactics, and you know, if I hear the effing word ninja one more time, I'm gonna strangle someone. Like, enough of the ninja, enough of the hacks, let's just get real, right? You gotta have something you love and you're passionate about. Like, and, and I wrote a post the other day, I said, you know, if you're not proud enough to wear the name of your company on your shirt, mm-hmm. then, you, then you need to find another company to sell. You know, Seriously. you need to do something else. Uh, you know, so I think it, it starts there. And if I didn't feel good, again, my dad's on my list, my sister's on my list. If I didn't feel good about promoting this, I couldn't do, I couldn't do it with the energy and the passion that I have. So I think it starts there. If you have that love, if you truly believe, and I'm not talking the BS believe, the old marketing that, hey, if, if people aren't buying your $30,000 coaching, then you're doing them a disservice. Come on, man. That's a way to rationalize, you know, because you feel guilty because you know you're not really delivering. That's their way of like goading you into it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you know you provide the value, then you should be proud to sell it. And when you do that, that energy and that passion comes through and you don't feel shady or like, well, I'm embarrassed to sell it because you feel friggin' good about it. And unless you get to that point with your business and your product or your membership, whatever you're selling, it's going to be hard to really stand out and to get people to follow you and to listen to you. Mm. I'm going to get off the soapbox now. I, went, <laughs> I love the soapbox. But I mean, I feel the exact same way. I, but what I want to do is sort of transition into, you were talking about membership sites, and I know you talk about this in general. And I feel like, I, so you know how we were talking about controversy beforehand. I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of digital products at all because I don't feel people use them. They buy them. They don't do anything. Not that I don't buy them for my team to train them. But in general, I don't sell any digital products because I'm not right. a huge fan. Mm -hmm. That being said, everyone's like, Jamie, you should start a membership site. I'm like, I don't, mm, I feel like things are changing membership site wise um, to where it is more about community and less about let's just give you a whole bunch of content in general. So tell me what you're seeing trending in membership sites. Because I I was part of a ton of them and now I'm not so much a part of a ton of them anymore. So tell me what you see is actually working well um, on the creation side of membership sites and then getting people to actually care about them. Yeah, well, I've also said for a long time, although Stu McLaren's gonna debate it and say he came up with it, but I've been saying, before Stu was born, um, they're, they're gonna, people are gonna join for the content, but they're gonna stay for the community. And that is still true to this day. There's that feeling, of, it's, cause it's not just about the content, it's about the feeling of being part of that community. That's a big part of it. Um, are there content-based sites? Yes, but see, I kind of go against my advice. I tell people, don't try to overwhelm them, right? Don't try to, it used to be, when I, when I started my first membership site in 2001 in sports and fitness. It, okay, I know. continue. <laughs> I know, I've been, I've been online for a long time. I've been doing this for, for quite a while. But I'm all, most of the money I made at the beginning was all in health and fitness and nothing to do with business. Uh, so I actually practice what I preach. But that was about let them drink from a fire hose because there wasn't a lot out there. Mm-hmm. But now there's so much, it's, it's, it's more about, Hey, join this for 20 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month. I'm going to sort through all that crap and just give you the good stuff. Like more, almost like curation in a way. Yeah, that's um, what I was and it's, it's not really about volume. Now us, again, I'm going against my advice, but ours, the way I position it is we're going to give you so much, but just like Netflix, you can't watch every movie and show it. It's literally impossible. You, you don't, there's not enough hours in the day. You, you, you literally couldn't do it. Same thing with freedom. You can't go through it. We have like a thousand hours and it grows every day. But just pick what you feel like learning. So if you feel like learning about traffic, boom, here we go. Here's 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 some trainings. If you want to learn about membership sites, here you go. It's it's kind of like well, yours a Vegas is actually buffet. updated. I was gonna say right. that's the other yeah. thing is membership sites. It's like from two years ago, and you're like, okay, great, that was awesome. Then nowadays, yeah. it's different. Submit yeah. your site to Hotbot and Lycos and Alta Vista, and you're gonna make money, baby. Um, yeah, and the stuff from like 2007 that feels so old, you know. Um, People still calling things like telesummits. Like it just, we need to update this stuff. So ours is, yeah, it's new, it's fresh, it has energy. So I think if you're going to do a content-based membership site, it has to have that feel. And the worst thing you could do is if someone's paying, you know, 
they people try to get every dollar out of that member. They try to wring it out of them. And oh, you want this? Well, this is password protected. This is our super duper mm. level. You know, this is oh, this is the the double XL level with Ryan. You get to spoon him for fifty bucks. Like it's like enough. Like enough of the upsells. Just give. Like imagine if you went into Netflix. And you want to watch, you know, oh, I want to watch Friends, right? Oh, sorry, that'll be another three dollars. That's our super deluxe. It's like, just give it to me. Like I don't I don't want to be nickel and dimes. And I think that feeling of doing it out of one word the word I use all the time is service. Like if you truly come from a place of service and you develop you deliver a membership site or experience or content that you would be blown away from as a member, great. That's our, by the way, that's Everyone talks about, you know, our, we have great customer support. We have one thing in our customer support. Here's the only filter we have to run it by. I, all, all of our team knows this. Any question that comes in, I say to them, they have to ask themselves this question. If I was a member, how would I want to be treated? Okay, they want a refund even though there's no refunds after a certain date. It's been two years. They still want a refund. If I was a member, what would I want? Even though I'm wrong, I'd want the refund. So we give it to them. Um, and when you, when you do it like that, people are going to stick around. But it is, membership is a retention game. All right, everyone doesn't realize that. Like, you can get lots and lots of people in, but if they don't stick around, there's no point. Well, um, what is the average? Because I know a lot of people are like, "Well, three months or ish." The average it depends yeah, on it, what it, it it probably is. Um, if you kind of go across the board in general, it's about three months. Um, I mean, I I remember I talked to one guy in this kind of internet marketing space with this awful, you know, they sell a product, oh, forty seven a month, my insider club, and it's like basically an interview with his hack friend, which is just a pitch. Um, and he's like, I don't understand my, <laughs> my churn like, rate. No, this is why I don't even like the word oh, membership site. Oh, no. The, and the churn rate was like 80%. Well, even this, think about like this, Jamie. If you look at the ch so churn, right? That's how many members turn over every month or yearly. There's, there's, member, there's monthly churn and yearly churn. If you have a, churn, a monthly churn of 10%, you're like, it's pretty good. But after 10 months, you're, if you don't fill it with new people, you're down to zero. Yep. So you always, we, our, our overall, um, marketing and, and content messaging. We have, we, I, I love, I'm like you, but I like to simplify things. We have things that are GT and KT tasks. Okay. GT is, is get them, which stands for traffic, social media. That's a traffic thing. Be, being a guest on here is a GT activity, right? I'm getting, attracting new people. And then there's KT, which is keep them, which is, hey, we could do new summaries. Oh, we're going to do a new post. We can do a live training. We can do like, that's KT. So we find that 50% of our time should be on GT activities and 50% on KT. And if it slants too much one way or the other, if we're too much focused on retention and not enough getting new people in, we're still going to lose some. So it's going to be lopsided and the memberships, you know, it's just going to slowly die. If we're too focused on traffic, 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 but we're not taking care of the members, we're going to get new people in, but it's going to be such a high turnover. It's a lot of stress too. So I think when you find that perfect thing, that half of my time is getting new people and half the time is taking care of the existing one, that seems to be the good balance. Okay, what works best for getting new people right now? Because I'm sure everybody's like, okay, great, tell me how to get new people. No drinking water allowed, Ryan. <laughs> uh, I love that. I love, well, that's a good question. I had to prepare for it. <laughs> Better be a good answer. No. There <laughs> is, well, th th look, in terms of, th now, now it's a traffic question, right? Um, and then you have to say, you have to look at your own resources. Do I have a budget? right? How long is my membership site? And then you, this is the stuff that makes, we talked earlier about being uncomfortable. This is stuff that makes people uncomfortable. You know, how much are you charging? What's your membership retention rate? What's your, your lifetime customer value? And let's say it's $30 a month, right? And the average, let's say the average member stays for three months. That's $90. So if you're going to do paid traffic, if it costs you $89 to acquire a member, you're, you make a dollar profit. Um, but you've, you've got to know your numbers. Now, if you're starting a membership site and it's brand new and you don't know your numbers, say you base it on two months, right? Just kind of be conservative and say, if I could be profitable at a customer retention of $60, you know, if they stay for three months or three and a half months, it's, it's even better, right? So if you're doing paid traffic, you have to at least have a baseline because you could say, oh, I'm getting a dollar a click. What do you, th is that, and they'll say, Ryan, I can get a dollar click. Is that good? Well, it, I have no idea. Yeah. What's the conversion? What's, what's a member worth? If, if your member stays for three years at 50 bucks a month and they're worth like $500, you could spend $200 to get the, you could spend $30 a click and make money. So yeah, do it all day. So you have to know that. And now let's say you have no budget, nothing, no money. You want to do free. Try to get in front of your audience. Podcasting is a great way to first of all, to connect with people, 
but to, to get in front of other audiences. Like, Jamie, you do a great job of, of building your, your audience and your list, and people know you and love you and trust you. They love the eventual millionaire brand. So here I am in front of it. It's like an implied endorsement. I'm getting in front of thousands of potential people that maybe didn't know me before. It's, that's rare because everyone knows me. But let's say they didn't. Let's say there's the I one who. I love you. Didn't. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> but, but, you know, finding where they are, the blogs, um, digital publications, uh, you know. So I just, see a lot of people doing this and then not get it. So it's harder to, of course, get a really, really popular show when you're first starting out. Oh, yeah. So they get the not so popular shows and then they feel like they're pounding the pavement and getting like two new subscribers that then don't convert and then they're like, this sucks, right? So so how, <laughs> exactly, which I get and it's business, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. That being said, we wanna know what what is sort of the most bang for our buck or should we just keep pushing and pushing and doing everything to see what hits? Yeah, there there is no one thing. Um, I will say the most, the most important thing, so t- we're talking free traffic, right? Paid traffic, you could have infinite scale. If you, if you get that working, so we, we'll, we'll do paid traffic, we're doing, stuff now where we'll send people to a free blog. We'll actually give them really good content. Mm-hmm. And the opt-in is, hey, if you want more, if you want to see the whole video, click, you know, enter your email. Is it so Facebook that's or is it other? Yeah. We're using Facebook. We're using Facebook traffic okay. um, because Everybody's it's so easy to. Facebook. I know. So easy to Nobody target. says anything else anymore. Okay. I yeah. know because it's so damn easy. Yeah. Um, Google, you have to play their game and everything has, it's, but um, it's still working. We're actually, we're testing Instagram now, yeah. um, which is still, which is integrated with Facebook. But uh, in terms of free, you know, it, I will say the most important thing you can do is be consistent. Like that's that's the most important thing. It's not about trying to be everywhere. And I, and I know there's guys like Grant Cardone and Gary Vaynerchuk we mentioned earlier who try to say you have to be omnipresent, you have to be everywhere, every platform you have to do. It's impossible. It leads to stress. You can't be everywhere. So don't try. Pick your one or two channels where you where you not only where your market is, but what's in your like comfort zone. If you're really good on video and you love talking, you love doing this, then focus on video. So I would say, okay, do a Facebook live show. Facebook, I mean, has you know, uh, one and a half billion people and it gives you free technology. You could turn on your computer and start doing a live show. If you do a live show, may- maybe start off say once a week, every Wednesday at noon, the, the, the Jamie Tardy show is coming, right? We're gonna be talking about oh, this. And me- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jamie Master Show, <laughs> the Jamie Master Show, the formerly, you know, um, the show featuring Jamie Masters. Um, <laughs> you're awesome. I would totally put you on the spot. I liked your face. <laughs> yeah, right. I've done it for years with that. So anyway, the the Jamie Master show. Uh, so consistency. Um, so I have a I have a guy, Jeff Cavalier. He built this really successful fitness brand. It started with one Facebook video, mm-hmm. and if you look back, to Facebook first. And I'm sorry, it wasn't Facebook. It was YouTube, and it was like this awful video. He got like 50 views, and then it was the next month. It was like 55, and slowly now every time he puts a video, he gets like 200,000 views. It takes. If you, if you don't have money to invest in it, you want to go the free route, it takes time. That's the thing. It just, it just does. There's, unless you, get, you kind of strike gold, you have a really good relationship with someone and you get on like a big show. So if you're in the business space and you know someone or you, you grew up with Tim Ferriss and all of a sudden you're featured on a show and you get 5,000 subscribers and you got some traction. Um, but that's not really, you, you can't really replicate or duplicate that. Uh, there's no, the free, there's the thing with free, it's free. But it's it's not uh, you, it's not dependable. You can't really rely on it. But consistency is a, is the thing, and that's why with my daily emails, people know I'm here. Like I've been online since I said 2001. That was my membership site. I've been online since the end of '98, early '99. So we're coming on like 18 years. So and I've never stopped. So the people who've been with me for 15, 16, 17 years, they know me, they like me, they trust me. I'm not saying it's going to take you 18 years. Thank but you. <laughs> don't give up after a month or two months. Like. Yeah. We're talking about building a business and we, we see these examples and we see someone who puts up a video and gets 100,000 views every time and you don't realize how lo- long it took them to get there. Another guy's Elliot Hulse. He came to one of my events years ago. No following. The guy's like a million people now and he's got this huge following. So, uh, and we did an interview with him and he just, like, he's, you see his video and you see the evolution and he just never stopped. What do you Even think when he's it getting is about hurt. those people? So, so not just the consistency, but is it about them as a human and people just resonate with them and they like it or they hit the marketing nail on the head for who they are versus with the audience that they're going for? Because I feel like there's got to be something besides consistency that really makes a sweet spot. They, they were driven. Like, I, I don't know what it is. Like, even there's another guy, a longtime client, Zach Evanesh, who oh, the minute that. I talked to him, yeah, he, he did the first call with me. 
He's like, dude, I'm a gym teacher. You know, I do some private training. I made five bucks an hour. I put flyers on a tree. That's it. That was his business. And now it's a multiple six figure business. But Zach never stopped and he never stopped being him. He never, he never did ninja stuff. He never did tricky stuff. It was just being real. And he was, you know, everyone uses the, the, the authentic, right? If I hear authentic one more time, I'm going to throw up. Um, people want to teach courses about being authentic. God, like just be you. Um, and that's the thing, like Zach was authentic before authentic was a thing, right? Just, he was just being him and the right people are going to find you and the, you know, you'll attract some and you repel others. And that's fine. And even with him, I tried to get him spe on speaking stages at the time at some of the big events and they didn't want him because he was like kind of raw and he would talk about lifting chains and tires before anyone else was doing it. Now they all want to talk about that. But, um, I think if you're, if you're driven and you're excited and you're passionate and you, you, you like lead, um, they're going to follow you. You know, it, it comes down to really, it, it, it truly, if people are going to follow you and they're going to especially invest money, like take out their credit card and buy something, they have to trust you. They have to, leadership is about trust, right? Like you have to, they have to trust you. Um, like when I was in, in college, I ran track and I was voted captain of our track team in college and in high school. And why did, why was I voted that? Was I the fastest on the team? No, second. I wasn't, but because they trusted me, they knew I would, I would always do the right thing and I would always take tip. And people on your email list and your social media and in your membership site or your product have to know you have their back. Jamie, a lot of people invest in coaching with you because they know you have their back. You're not going online and talking about the, oh man, I just closed another $10,000 deal, awesome, cool dude. Like you're doing it because you care and, you, and when people get that feeling and, and the Zachs and the Jeff and Elliot and all the people over the years that have followed my advice and, and never stopped, they were real, they never sold out, and they're just doing what feels right. Um, whether everyone else, and all the other gurus said, oh, you gotta promote, you gotta do JVs, you gotta do affiliate launches, nope, man, I'm just going, I'm going straight. And it's funny, those three guys that I mentioned never got involved in like the JV world and launches, and you mail for me and I'll mail for you, never. They're just like, I'm gonna do my own thing. And either you come on board, and you know what, I'm, and they all sacrificed, and I do, I've done this too, sacrificed a lot of short-term short -term money but you, the trust you get back, it, it's not even, you can't even compare it. You spoke at my event a year and a half ago. It's like the only marketing event where there's no pitching. People are like, I don't understand. How could I do this? How could I come? And, and, and not, how do you not pitch me on a $30,000 mastermind? Or how is everyone not pitching? And I'm like, well, uh, you know. You had, you, eight, you had friends, like you had Abel who was playing guitar. And Abel just went because he loved you. And you're Dan Meredith, who I was like, whoa, this guy, uh, very... Yeah. Yep, own personality for <laughs> sure. Uh, but yep. it was awesome because it didn't necessarily, it wasn't the same old, same old. You know what I mean? Right. It and, was really and you cool. can't be scared. You can't be scared to just be yourself and, and try to just say, this is what I feel. And people, it's amazing that people will feel it back and they'll respond. And uh, it's, there's no better, when you hit that sweet spot and you're doing a business that you love, that you're excited about, and you're doing what you're good at, whether it's video, whether it's writing, whether it's an audio podcast, whatever you're good at, and you just go in and you're in your zone, it's, it's eat, like marketing really becomes effortless. Like it doesn't feel like marketing. It feels like just talking to friends. This is, it. Jamie, I could do this all day. I know, that's a, I am gonna do this all day. So that's what's so funny. It Everyone's is. like, how can you do seven back-to-back -back interviews? And I was like, I don't even, time doesn't even, Pat, like, I don't even realize that time goes by. Like the sun goes down, I'm like, oh shoot, um, okay, apparently it was the whole day. Uh, because yeah. I love, I love, love, love connecting and doing this and I so appreciate, and time goes by so fast, I didn't even realize how long we've been on right now. Awesome, Oh, right? we're just getting started. This is, this is part one. <laughs> I know, we've got seven hours straight of Ryan Lee, <laughs> all live, ready, go. Could, you would totally oh, bring could, it. You would totally. Oh my God. Fine. <laughs> I just did a, I did a workshop two weeks ago. I, I literally talked for like eight hours straight. I, I, <laughs> I, I have all my cough drops over here because I make sure I'm going to have a voice by the end of all of these. <laughs> I forgot. And you know, I usually do vocal warmups and I forgot to do them. So I'm even feeling it. I got oh, some good vocal. We'll have to chat because I need vocal warmups. I don't know oh. how to do that. So we'll talk about two that days of, Two days of talking, I didn't lose my voice at all. <gasps> That sounds you're like, amazing. I know. You do all these little exercises and your voice is like completely relaxed. Okay. We'll have to talk about that for yes. sure because that's now something. Because now if I don't have a voice, I can't coach. I can't I can't do interviews. That would, that, you know, there goes the business. I'll be the there. mute just, next person. And I hate writing. So I'll just be just mute. Learn, just learn Stand sign language. Yeah. yeah. Actually, no. I know one sign. I know some sign. Signs, Ready? Yeah. Wait. That was my cat threw up, by the way. Just so you know, yeah. that was sign language college. I was not very good at it, obviously. <laughs>
I went to a half deaf school, so we had to learn oh, sign, and that's the only thing I remember because that's important to know. Awesome. Yeah, I remember the letters like A, B, C, yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. see, this is why I love you, Ryan. Everyone's like totally off topic, but it makes us love you more. Awesome. So <laughs> I have to ask you the last question. You ready for it? It's what's one action listeners can take this week, better be good, to help move them forward <laughs> towards their goal of a million. I love that I can joke with you. Go ahead. Um, okay. Keeping in line with what we're saying, I, I, beyond the theoretical, beyond having a product you believe in, blah, blah, let me give you something tactical. Um, it, and it, it's, it, I'll give you a two for one. Build that list. Like, f- if you have to do one thing, focus on building your list. Okay. Like, it, social media, Facebook, all that stuff is great, but that's just a channel to get them onto your list because that's your biggest asset. By far, everyone says email is dead. Don't listen to them because they're just trying to sell you like a Pinterest course. Build your list. But um, on, the, on the flip side of that, if you build your list, you got to communicate and communicate like a friend. Um, when you do those two things, you can literally run a seven-figure business with one person from home with, one, with like a daily email. Um, at 100%, um, build your list and communicate. Uh, that, that really, everything else, all the traffic, all the things, Get them onto your list and just communicate and be cool. And uh, that, everything else, you could take away all my other stuff. You just leave me with my list. I'm good. Hashtag be cool. See, Ryan makes it sound so simple. Everyone's like, I'm on the bandwagon. It is. <laughs> it is. Like, it really is. Like, everything, social media, it's just, a, it's just a vehicle to get them on. That's, and I had a whole program called One Email a Day. That's the whole business model. It's so simple. And so few people do it because they don't get it and they don't write the right emails or they have a list and they never communicate. They're scared. What if people unsubscribe? Don't focus on that. Focus on the people who get it. Um, but that really is absolutely the key. And you'll start getting back emails. Oh my God, Jamie, thanks so much for that email. That was awesome. Or thanks for that reminder. I love this. Oh, I look forward to your emails every day. And you start reaching and connecting. Greatest business in the world. I and you get to work from home. It. Yeah, in your basement where you have a closet that you go in. <laughs> in general so where do people and a record player and a record player exactly which you showed us before so where do we actually get those email like how can we sign up on your daily email so that way they can see what you're looking to do every Um, single day just go to freedom f-r-e-e-d-y-m dot com um i think there's a little place to opt in for an email i don't even know if not (laughs) i don't even care this go to ryan lee or or just go to ryan lee r-y-a-n-l-e-e dot com and there's a big thing it's just like hey come on my newsletter um I, i hope you'll enjoy it and if not, go F yourself. No, um, you're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, no come on board. Uh, we, we, I, I love, I seriously, there's nothing, there's nothing I look forward to more than writing my daily email and getting email back and having people write back, oh my God, I followed your advice and I just made this money or now I'm working from home and I'm loving life. And uh, Jamie, I seriously, thank you for having me. I sound like a manic nut job. Thank you for having me. But I, I love what you do. So, <laughs> I That's want you awesome. to keep doing keep doing what you're doing. I sound like a manic nut job. On that note, yep. we're gonna go sign up for his list. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Ryan. You already know I do. Thanks so much for coming on the show again today, and hopefully we'll hang out again in person soon. Have an amazing day, and everybody go sign up and see what he says, and then email him back and say Jamie sent me, so that way he knows how much people love you. My person, by the way, if you, if you do have a question, oh, should I give? I'll do it. I'll give my email. Dun, dun, dun. Ryan at ryanlee.com. They're probably going to guess that. that, but that's okay. Yeah. Good. Email yeah, Ryan. Probably... Lots of things yeah. with no. pictures of record. <laughs> it's your own fault. You said it. <laughs> I did. No, I only like email it. him to not waste his time to tell him that he's awesome or something like yes. that. Okay. Compliment. I, I'm, I'm not very good at constructive criticism. By the way, don't ever give people constructive criticism if they don't ask for it. That's the most annoying thing in the world. Hey, Ron, I like you, but you had a spelling error. Or that's, don't do that. All right. I'm going to keep going, so I'm going to shut up. See, this is why you can do seven hours straight. (laughs) I have to prepare for my next interview because I prepare, but you go send emails. Have an amazing day. We'll chat again soon. Take care, Ryan. (laughs) Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you want to check out more amazing resources, I'm only curating the best of the best. Go check out eventualmillionaire.com. You can take the Eventual Millionaire quiz, figure out where you are in business and what you need right now. Plus, you can look at curated resources specifically for you on the new Start Here page. I'm so excited. Please join us. Please let me know if you need anything at all. I'm here for you. And have a fantastic day. Bye.